Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pediatric Speech Sister Show. I am so excited to have my guest today. This is a very special episode. I'm bringing on the interns, okay? The people who've been behind the scenes of the whole production all fall. So I'm very excited to get into the episode today. So this is our way of closing out the year. Um, I'm already just feeling all of the lab on the call, by the way, y'all. Like, uh, I'm going to try not to get emotional. <laughs> yeah, I'm to me, I hope you understand that. And we're just going to go ahead and get into the episode before I start crying. We'll go ahead and have introductions and I'll let Ari start. Hi, everyone. I'm Ari Burgoyne. I've been an intern with the Melanie White Evans Internship Program for two cohorts now, and I absolutely love it. You can find me at Ari B. Speech on Instagram. I'm a lifestyle and speech content creator, and I'm really excited to be on the show with everyone. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Kelsey Lewis. I'm a second year graduate student at Stony Brook University. I am with Melanie just for the fall cohort. We'll see about the spring. And my Instagram is Speak Up Soul. And I haven't posted anything yet, but follow me and stay tuned. We got something in the works. Hi everyone. My name is Jane Kumar. I'm a first year grad student at Marquette University. And my Instagram handle is lejane.sop. I also have just a few posts, but stay tuned. Hopefully during this break, we'll keep it a little more active. Good morning, beautiful people. Okay, first thing I noticed is everybody else on the screen is completely filled and mine is not. I'm going to help me with that in a second. Okay. But anyway, my name is Alice Williams. I go by Miss Alice. And my Instagram page is speech with Miss Alice because I am the owner of my own LLC. I've been at SLP for five years and I was the old school part of this for cohort. And I had a fantastic experience, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa Pena and I am a full-time executive assistant, part-time student, and I'm actually in the process of applying to graduate school for SLP. And you could follow my journey at Speaking with Vanessa on Instagram. All right. So I'm so excited that y'all mentioned your um, Instagram pages because a few of you already had your pages and some of you started the pages during the program. So I believe the ones who started was Kelsey and Vanessa, right? Okay. So can y'all tell me about your journey, really like your idea around your page and where it is now? You can start with Kelsey. Yeah, so like Melanie said, I did not have a page. I knew I was wanted a page, but I was just like, it's taking that leap of faith of like actually starting it that I was a little bit like, I don't know about that. But with Melanie's help, she definitely gave me some confidence. And then I started the page regarding like where I kind of see it going. I'm still trying to figure that out and just see what I enjoy doing. But for right now, I know I definitely want to do some of like the e-commerce stuff and make clothing. I know that I speak about that a lot. I just feel like, there is something that I can kind of add to the SLP field when it comes to the apparel that we have that maybe other people aren't bringing. So I'm excited to explore that journey. And also I'm going to be in a hospital placement in the spring for my last externship. And I feel like you don't see that many, I mean, well, you don't see that many Black women in the field, period. And you don't see that many Black women, I feel like, in the medical setting in SLP as well. So I just wanted to shed some light on that and share my experiences and overall what it's like to be a grad student and continuing living in New York. So that's what I'm thinking of doing right now. But I think it'll forever evolve once I figure out kind of like what's my niche and stuff like that. Yeah, I think for me, I have experience with like video editing, public speaking and theater, but having my own social media account for a particular interest was something new to me. So being in this program, it really like I broke out of my shell in creating the account and I feel like I'm still in the process of figuring out what kind of content I want to share. I can say for sure I'll probably I will share my journey since I'm in the early stages of becoming an SLP. But as far as like a specialty in the content, still in the works. 
Thank you all so much. And I forgot to ask the question that I always ask my guest, what is your why? So if we could start with Ari on your why of joining the field. Ooh, okay. My why is I just really, well, for one, I love working with kids. I'm probably going to continue working with kids, whether in the school or private practice. But I really enjoy seeing like the kids smile and laugh with me and just enjoy being around me and working with me. And I think like Kelsey mentioned earlier, there aren't a lot of Black people in the SLP field. And it really warms my heart when I have Black clients and they just recognize me and see themselves in me. And I just really want to advocate for more diversity in the field and just be able to make an impact on all my clients' lives, whether they're really small, like EI, which I love, or they're older. But I just really love the field. And I love that this internship let me meet all of you because there's so much diversity here. I love this. (laughs) And just trying to diversify the field as much as we can because we need there's such a demand for us, but definitely a demand for diversity. So I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, my why is pretty similar to ours as well. Just expanding diversity. I just feel like it's super important, especially when you go to your clinical externships and you realize that like the population of SLPs doesn't really match the clients that we're actually seeing. They're so diverse. So the same thing, like when I see clients and they do see that I'm black and like even at my last externship, I was uh, one of two black people in the entire building. So and but there were several black children that were in that school. So just being able to connect with them and then them also looking at me as being like, oh, OK, like I can see she looks like me. I can see that maybe one day I can also be in a position like her because I felt like I feel like when I was a child, I didn't really have anyone to look at that looks like me that were in the spaces that I wanted to be. So just being a role model, I think is important and advocating are definitely a few of the things that are my why. Yeah, kind of to go off what both of you said, because I feel like mine is pretty similar as well. And I think it really aligns with what Kelsey was saying about the advocating part and seeing like people who look like us in professional spaces, because with speech, you kind of have to get your master's. So I feel like that's also such a huge step up that I didn't see growing up, like a lot of people who look like me with master degrees. So I think creating that space and just letting kids know that they can do this too. Like if I could do it, you could do it, especially like community-based. So like even going into schools and like shadowing makes a huge difference. Like kids will come up and like ask questions about it. So yeah. All right stumbled upon this field so it actually found me why I chose it I have a gift to help people and it was either and I was in the medical setting already so it was either uh, OT, PT nursing, sports medicine and I went through all of the things that I could do and speech called to me I knew I, I know I have gifts and speech just taps all all the boxes and I love you Lolo but I'm going to correct you you do not have to have a master's to be a speechy (laughs) true and that's my why currently why I do it because I want everyone to know that you don't need a master's degree to do speech if you want one go go ahead with your bad self I'll be there one day but you can do speech right here and I'm going to show you how follow me please Um, For my why, it's always been known for me to want to help people. I knew I always wanted to help and educate people in some way. And coming across speech language pathology, it's a field that not a lot of people know about. And I had to learn about that myself. And the concept of speech disorders and how it ties into your everyday life the concept was interesting to me and it was something that I wanted to dive deeper into and the everything about it just aligned with my goals and how I wanted to help people. So that was my why of choosing speech language pathology. And I agree with everyone else that there is a lack of diversity in the field. And 
to be someone who can represent in their community is really important. Wow. Thank you all so much. Very impactful reasons for being in the field. And I'm so thankful that y'all are taking up space, not only in your programs, not only um, in your clinical placements, but also online where you can have such a larger reach. So I'm going to start with Ari with this question. Can you share your experience working with the internship program and how it influenced your understanding of speech pathology? Okay. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I've been in the internship program for two semesters now. So I started in the summer and what really called me to join the first time around was because I did, I've had this speech page for a while since like the summer before graduate school. I just finished my last semester, by the way. So two and a half years ago, I started the page and like a lot of us, we started to, we start these pages to document our journey. And that's what it was. I was sharing the ins and outs of the struggles of being a grad student, especially a minority graduate student. But then this past year, like classes started to die down. I was in more of externship spaces and I really wanted to rebrand. I really wanted to hone in on this lifestyle, beauty, self-care, romanticize your life vibe. And so I was really called to elevate my content, but I wasn't really sure how. I made many steps along the way, but I had followed Melanie and everything about her is just like goals, like hello, businesswoman, oh. podcaster, small business, SLP, everything. So when she put out the ad for the internship and it was like, elevate, you know, your social media influencing, get praxis coaching, because I was starting to, you know, prepare for the praxis and had no idea where to start and just the one-on-one -on -one coaching, life coaching, which I feel like I really needed because the burnout is real, y'all. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is a sign. This came to me at a time where I really needed it. I didn't have any externships in the summer other than my DR trip to do speech with underprivileged communities in Spanish, which was mm -hmm. shocking. So that's what called me to join. And I feel like through Melanie's coaching, I've really enhanced my understanding of what it means to be a Black SLP and to understand the concepts. Because I know for me personally, in my grad school experience, I struggled a lot with like neuro and anatomy and like aphasia and just different disorders. And I was kind of having those negative self-talks like, well, I just never be able to understand this. Like, what kind of SLP am I if I just like, can't understand it but Melanie really helped me work through that and especially with the group praxis coaching I really like that learning from different species in the field and understanding that I have the ability to learn it I just have to learn in my own way and I feel like Melanie really helped me figure those things out and I passed the praxis because of her so oh, it yes <laughs> so, yeah that's you know I really appreciate what I've learned with Melanie. And that's why I hopped in for the second cohort. And I was like, I cannot let this go. Like it's already Thank helping me you. so much. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ari. Yeah, my experience has been great. I think one of the best things about Melanie is like her flexibility and her patience because I was really busy in the fall, like on top of just like classes, doing my externship. And then also like working on top of that, I was like, Oh my Lord, how am I about to like manage everything? But she was really patient and flexible with my schedule. And in regards to my experience too, I felt like it definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. And I also feel like I learned a lot, just even about like graphic design and just learning more things about like how to make certain flyers and learning about the podcast. And also just learning about like all the self-doubts that I was having about making the page and stuff with the private one-on-one -on -one meetings, those are something else. So that was like, dang, Kelsey, like, <laughs> you can make the page. Like, stop thinking about the negative aspect of and what could happen and what if, just like, do it. Also, the support from, like, the entire cohort, too, I felt like we were, like, all going. We were all in different aspects of what our pages were like, but the support was nice. And especially even Vanessa, too, because we both started it up. So I know we would text and be like, I don't know what to do. Or like, should I do this? Should this be my post? Should I do this? So like that support was good because I was like, am I going crazy? But I was not. <laughs> it's just sometimes you overthink stuff. And I'm a Virgo, so I overthink a lot, which I got to stop doing. So overall, I learned a lot, especially with the practice stuff too. Like 
I didn't really know how to attack it. Like you, you buy that advanced um, review book and it's like thicker than thick. And you're like, what am I? That's I'm a good like, yeah. <laughs> like how, what are we about to do? So just her helping me kind of like break it into like smaller steps has definitely made it not as old woman. I'm still nervous, but not as nervous as I was before. So that's me. It fit a bit. Understanding my like, in like the aspect of SLP regarding this program, I didn't realize that so many things like could relate back to our field. And I think I appreciated that more with just seeing the podcast podcast guest and saying, oh, that's like an interesting topic. Like even some of our guests were not SLPs or audiologists. Like they could be like social workers and just understanding like there's such an intersectionality when it comes to SLP. Like we cover so many things. So you could really have anyone come and talk and somehow it's going to relate back to like our field. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I appreciated that. I love my time with Graham. Oh, thank you, Kels. I also had such an amazing time. And I think something that was unique about all of this was like during our group meetings, like we would talk about like what we were doing in regard to the internship, but there was always like a part where it was like more like like, I think the one that stuck out the most to me was the financial literacy kind of PowerPoint that we did, because I think that's not something that everyone teaches, but it's very important in our field, especially as people who are going into it. So I think that really helped me a lot. One project that I will forever remember is the Block ASL project. That was and awesome. I did not know much about that. So I think working on that just taught me like, that the world of speech there's so much out there and Melanie kind of guided me through like looking for ways on how to find that and like she gave me the resources for it so I feel like I just learned so much about that and in regards to my page I had just started my page when I started the program I, had, I was thinking about it before but I like did not kind of what Kelsey and Vanessa were talking about like it's always a thought, but it's kind of hard to just like sit there and make it. And so I think the program also helped me understand why I want that page and like what I want to do with it, because we always talked about that. So I think I just learned so much like and like in my understanding of speech and then my page and just like how to move about grad school in general. The program helped me in so many ways, but I think the one I'd like to share with you all is... Don't be afraid to be afraid. Melanie helped me feel safe in my anxiety and my uncertainty about the program. When I went into her DM asking, I, li I like this, but I don't know if I should do this. Interview with me. Let let's, talk, let's talk about that. She didn't shut me down. She didn't make me feel small. She let me be vulnerable. She saw me and she sees me. She sees all of us right where we are. And that's a gift, honey. <laughs> that is a gift. You are a gifted, brilliant, amazing, powerful. I could go on and on. Like, I love me some Mel. You can't tell me nothing about this Black woman right here. Period. Um, this, this, this has been a game changer for me um, in so many ways. And yeah, I, I'm... I'm okay in my fear in this, in this space. And I told her in the future, you know, if I could still reach out, I was even scared to ask that. I was even scared to ask like, is it okay? Like, you know, if we stay close, we stay connected. And she was like, yeah, we can. Not like this. This is for our people. <laughs> but yeah, most definitely. And so that's what I got from this experience. A safe space. Thank you, Thank you, Alice. That was powerful. Thank you. So my overall experience with the program was absolutely amazing and very positive. I really appreciate all of the interns that I've worked with because everyone is so inspiring and motivating in their own way. And Melanie, again, is like absolutely amazing person, flexible, understanding, very supportive. And my experience of learning about speech language pathology has been positive because being someone who's starting out their journey, I really wanted to get my foot into the door, into the career. And this program really helped me understand 
what it's like being a speech language pathologist and even running your own business, doing the marketing and working with other people. And so it's really helped hone my ideas and like shape me in figuring out what I want to do as a specialty and preparing myself when I eventually get my three C's and start working at a, at a place of my dreams. Wow. So when all of you were talking, but especially Vanessa, I think about how in Kelsey too, every single person on this call navigated doing all of the things while also being a part of the program. So, whoa, I mean, Y'all are, y'all are actually super women because I, what I first of all just say thank you for still taking this program seriously and still pouring your heart into this program, despite things that were probably even happening in your personal life on top of getting through your programs and your jobs and everything else that falls in between that. So I want to have a little, a little mindset, mental health advice moment on how you all navigated that if anyone wants to share i would say for me if was she i love zodiacs and i said sorry y'all i'm gonna keep bringing it up but being a virgo i just feel <laughs> i just feel like we are perfectionists and i'm the type of person where it's like i want to be perfect at every single thing and if i'm not perfect at it like immediately i'm like oh, no can't do this can't do this what i don't get it in 2.3 seconds like no not for me you feel me right alice yeah so okay <laughs> I feel like, and there's probably a lot of other people who feel that way, where you just want to be perfect at every single thing. And I got to tell myself, like, girl, relax. Like, you don't need to, like, go from having zero followers to 1.5 million. Like, it doesn't, that, that's not going to be your worth. That's not going to be your value. You don't need to be perfect at everything. Just let things happen naturally. And I think that's where a lot of, like, my negative thoughts about just, like, not even just my page, but, like, being an SLP period. Like if I didn't get the highest grade in audiology, audiology was beating me up, y'all. If I didn't get the highest grade in audiology, I was like, am I supposed to be here type situation like Ari would say? But I just feel like remembering like you're not going to literally be perfect at everything and not feeling bad about also taking time for yourself. I feel like when you're in school that you kind of feel bad if you're like spending your weekend like going out with your friends and like having a girl's night or whatever. And in the back of your mind, at least for me, I'm like, wait, I should, I should really be at the library. I should really be at the library. And I feel guilty after hanging out with people. But I'm like, no, that's, that's also a part of something that's important. Because if I spend all my time with school, then I'm really going to be burnt out. And then when it comes to taking that test, I probably won't do as well because I didn't give myself a break. So give yourself grace and give yourself a break. I think those are like important things. I also think finding your people is important. Because I think one thing that helped with this program specifically was just the group chat and just like checking in and like people were honest with their feelings so it kind of helped a lot so I feel like finding people who will like support and motivate you throughout because you will have off days because not every day is going to look perfect but if you have people there who like give you those encouraging words and put you in check at times I think that also goes a long way. Thank you. I love, Lodane, how you said those encouraging words that put you in check, because I just think about specifically with Kelsey and how she kept going back and forth with her Instagram name. And we're like, girl, if you don't just, we all already voted yes on this name. (laughs) She's like, let me just sleep on it. I got to sleep on it. Like, no, just do this name. It's okay. You can always change it. So I'd be be overthinking. I'm telling you, I'll be thinking too much. (laughs) That's so funny. But I'm so thankful that you did that. So my next question is, can you discuss a challenging case or situation that you had during your internship and how you approached it? What did you learn from this experience? You know, something kind of going off the last question. So I mentioned earlier how like the imposter syndrome around, you know, praxis things and everything just kind of uh, made me feel bad about myself and one thing I had to navigate (laughs) in the group sessions was like understanding that the words you put out into the universe like actually come around and like do the things that you didn't want them to do so sometimes in the praxis coaching we'd be in a group and I sense like these 
interns, they're so intelligent and smart and they just understand these things and I don't. And so a lot of the times I would be like, oh, I just wish I could be like such and such. And I would say it in these calls. Like, I wish I could just be as smart as such and such. And I would get checked so fast. Like, no, don't do that. Because like in your compliment to me, you're insulting yourself. And that's just like reinforcing the circle that you're in. So you need to step out of that and be like, I know this stuff and I this is my way of figuring it out. And like, I got it. I just have to, you know, take a second, breathe. I've been holding my crystals this whole time because I was feeling yes. the nerves a little bit. And I was like, am I like shaking a little bit because I'm cold or am I anxious? And so I did what Melanie taught me to do and just ground myself. And so I think in grounding yourself and trying to not view yourself so negatively is going to set you up for more success. So even those little things of me being just like, oh, I'm just complimenting my friend. Like, I'm just complimenting her. It's like, no, you are doing the biggest disservice to yourself and you need to like get out of that mindset. So I think that's been really challenging for me, especially when all of us are so amazing. I love all of y'all and what you bring to the table. It's been awesome working with y'all and seeing especially like Kelsey, Vanessa, and Lojane like expand your pages and everything. It's just been really awesome. And so we all just need to be proud of ourselves and our accomplishments. And like Kelsey said earlier, come with grace for ourselves and others. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ari. I want to pick on Vanessa because Vanessa is someone else. Like if I could circle back to the last question on doing all of the things, maintaining your mental health and also balancing this program on top of everything else. Like Vanessa, when you did the live takeover, I had no idea that you would be doing work like from your car, taking breaks from your full time job and doing like that's crazy. So can you explain a little bit about because, you know, to you, it, it might be kind of normal because that that you know, your life. But when I'm watching this, I'm like, she is that girl. How is she doing this? <laughs> so can you explain a little bit um, about your own personal challenges and how you overcame them so that way you can continue to invest in yourself in this program while also keeping your mental health in order? Yes. Yeah, so in case any viewers didn't watch, all of us interns, we did an intern takeover in the Pediatric Speech Sister I Instagram page. And in my day in the life, so I work, I work as a full-time executive assistant, and then I was in school, virtual student part-time, and then I was joining the internship program. So this entire year was such a learning curve for me in time management. I would get up and go to work eight to five. And then during my 15 minute breaks, during my lunch hour, I'm sitting in my car, I'm on my computer, and I'm either listening to lecture or doing homework and joining the program. That was when I was starting to do research for graduate schools, talking to advisors, you know, completing the application. And then after work, I go home, I do the live lecture, and then I'm studying for another four to five hours. And then even the weekends, I would dedicate eight to 12 hours studying, getting homework done because it was an accelerated program. So we had assignments due every week. We had quizzes due every week. We had a lot of readings doing. It was definitely a lot on top of challenges in my personal life that happened this year. So it was a lot of navigating physically, emotionally, mentally. And I can say it was really hard for me. It was really hard navigating all of that. And I did experience burnout in the year. What I've learned from this program, because I had informed Melanie, like, this is all the things that I'm doing at once. She had taught me to just really take the time for myself, practice some kind of meditation or some kind of technique for myself to just really have my me time, center myself. And just that reminder that, you know, just like, Kelsey and everyone was saying like you're not you can't be perfect you can't do everything at once and that's okay so I hope I answered the question I think but yeah I think that the program really helped me remind myself to just recenter from all of the crazy whirlwind of life that happens 
Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vanessa, for sharing. And, and thank you, everyone, for your vulnerability on this call. Because, Vanessa, what I'm hearing from you is just also just giving yourself grace through all of this. Like, there are curveballs that life throws at you, you know, so you sign up for an internship program, but everything is relatively fine and dandy. And then you're midway in the internship program and then boom, 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 like three things happen. Like maybe they're the class, Kelsey, that threw you off or the comprehensive finals, right, that the, that throw you off or, you know, any other things that are happening in your personal life that you really couldn't have planned for. So I thank you all for just sticking it out anyway and also being communicative with me um, on it because that just shows that mutual respect factor right there. So definitely love all of you. Well, we are at the 30 minute mark of our call. Is there any other points that someone would want to add um, either about this program, about starting an Instagram page or being your own brand, anything like that? I want to try to summarize, <laughs> excuse me, for, and I'm trying to speak for all of us, please forgive me if I'm out of line, but what I think helped us all maintain our school, our work, our families, for me, a business, being a mom, was you. You're the glue, Melanie. You gave us the space to be ourselves and come as we were and drop all of our stuff kind of at, at our feet when we met with you, the one the one on ones. Listen, I'm speak right to the audience. You're gonna get these one on one sessions if you sign up for this thing, and they are everything. You hear me? <laughs> you're you're gonna learn some stuff, right? You're you're gonna grow, but you, your person, is gonna flower. You're gonna bloom because of this young lady. That's what keeps it going. Communicate, be honest, be real, be raw, and have fun. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Yeah, to go off of that, because those one-on-ones just, like, they're not focused on speech, so they just, like, touch you specifically. And Melanie does such a great job of just having you, like, think on things that you've never thought of before. And it just, it's very moving, empowering. And I just wanted to add also, if you're thinking of doing an Instagram page, just do it. Like, I think the first step is just making it because once you make it, that's it. It gets, it gets a lot better from there. I'm not going to say it gets easier because then you have to think of posts to make, but it does get better because you took that first step and then you should just celebrate that win right there. Thank you. Anyone else? I would like to just agree with everyone here. And for the audience, if you are deciding on joining the internship, I highly recommend it because this is such a great group of people that you are experiencing this with. And Melanie is such a supportive and flexible being. And like, just like everyone said, the one-on-ones, highly recommend. And just just do it. Just join the program and you will like the outcome in the end. Thank you, Vanessa. You're wonderful. Kelsey, did you have something to add? Yes, I was going to say that honestly, too, you get a, a great support group when you join, which I think is great because like, who's doing? Now I have a friend in California. Like, I never thought that would happen. New York to California. Boom. Like, <laughs> So I think you get it's important. I feel like that's like the best thing if you're thinking about making a page too. Because if I post something, I know all these people are going to be in the likes. going to be the first ones to comment. So I think the support is great too in that aspect. Because it is nerve wracking. You get nervous and you're like, are people going to like this? Does this seem relatable? People going to understand what I'm talking about. So if you are thinking about it, I would definitely encourage you to do it. And just take that leap of faith. Because you never know what could happen. Thank you. And Ari, last but not least, did you have a point to add? Yeah. And it's kind of just going off of what everybody said. I was trying to find. So one of the things that I started to do during the internship program is have post-it no post notes around my space to just give me reminders. And I couldn't find it, but kind of to go off on what everyone was saying about like not living in fear. There is a quote I had somewhere that said something like, 
what would life be like if we didn't have the courage to try or something? And I feel like, like everyone said, fear is something that, yeah, is scary, but sometimes you just have to like look fear in the face and be like, I'm going to try this because this is what I want. I have dreams. I don't care what anyone else thinks about those dreams. And I'm just going to go for it and just hope that it works out because the universe will always catch you at the end. And just the the fact that you're trying it and seeing how it goes, like you will learn so much from this program, things that you probably didn't even think you were going to learn. Like I've had so much to learn about myself and how I interact with others and how I want to be as an SLP and just like a human being. So all that to say, I feel like we all feel it. Just thank you, Melanie, so much. We've learned so much and I feel like we've all grown from working with you and being mentored by you and I wouldn't have had it any other way like each group is amazing I love the summer cohort I love the fall cohort and it's just gonna each cohort is gonna be amazing and maybe we'll like step back in at some point and work with y'all as well but it's been amazing and I just thank you again for having us on your podcast because this was awesome Thank you so much. And I definitely hope that y'all let me have you back on the podcast at some juncture, whether it's individually or as a group. I mean, what y'all are doing are incredibly incredible. The one-on-one meetings and just hearing what you all are building and the seeds that were planted in those are like, wow, we need this not only in the field, but also in the world. And anyone listening to this, the main question I asked them was, what would you ask for if you knew the answer would be yes? And you always kind of pause when you get that question because no one just asked that question. Now, of course, maybe you might get the what if you have like a, a magic wand or something? That's another way to put it. But that's also when those fears start coming up. And so in the program, we start battling those fears, fears, writing down those fears, figuring out ways to release them. So I thank you all for being so vulnerable on this call and expressing what those fears were for you. And I hope that anyone listening to this will start an Instagram page or become more active on the Instagram page. Because when I went to ASHA this past year, what I found is we speech pathologists love to network with each other and not network in the sense I think in college we're kind of taught about networking as sharky, like what can I get from you? But when I think of the word network, I mean like connecting with each other. So this right here, this is us, we're networking really, but it doesn't feel like it because we could, you know, we're connecting. So make that page. You never know who needs to follow you. You never know who needs to hear your voice. I guarantee you, God gave you a voice. And it's interesting as speech pathologists, we are put in front of people to give them voices, but we don't like using our own. So, folks, you know, definitely just consider that. And I just thank you all so much again for being so brave and joining this program. Thank you all so much again for taking your time and sacred efforts. And I cannot wait to continue to connect with you all and see you all take up space in this field. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for watching the show. Those watching the replay or listening to the podcast, if you want to follow them, I will go ahead and put everyone's social media handles in the show notes. And until then, we'll see you in the new year. Bye, fam. Bye. 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 Bye.